Ryu Ueta is, I mean, he's not on the cards, is he? One, one fighter who's going to be on the radar. The magic man. Yeah, the magic man. Now, Bunsen, it, we're not talking Paul Daniels. A lot of people called me Paul. That was my nickname when I played rugby, Paul Daniels. Because you were did you just, you just like, everywhere. No, because I was nowhere. going slightly bald and my ears stuck out. Okay, I thought it was because you had like a silk <laughs> cravat on or something. You, you're a stylish beast, Mr. Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's talked there about uh, Paulie Man Mananaji, and I'm pleased he talked about him because um, he calls him a, you know, a bad guy, a guy with a big mouth. Well, I kind of like uh, Mananaji. He's sort of entertaining. He's going to be on this undercard. He's fighting a guy called love more and do and the fear and the theory is what we hope we hope the theory is that in theory Malinaji wins and um ricky hatton wins and they fight each other possibly new york madison square garden well you know what that's me talking and i like to do that matt but i believe if i'm not mistaken we've got paulie on the line now paulie hey what's up guys Thanks yeah. for having me. how are you my friend now listen paulie ricky's described you as a bad guy and a guy with a big mouth you're a nice <laughs> guy aren't you yeah hey, i'm a nice guy <laughs> come on man don't, just don't give me that don't give me that lack of credit <laughs> Now you look. First of all, I've got to ask you this: Are you looking forward to coming over to England, fighting in front of about fifty-five thousand people? I'm excited, man. I really am. This is going to be the biggest crowd I've ever fought in front of in my life, and I don't think I'll be fighting in front of a crowd this big probably the rest of my career. So I think it's very exciting. Um, and not just that, I think just the history of, of uh, you know English football in general, uh, getting to fight in the Manchester City soccer stadium, is going to be quite a treat for me. And Paulie, we're hearing that it's it's just about set that if you win and Ricky wins on the same night, that you'll fight you'll fight later in the year. Is that the plan? Um, I believe that's the plan. That that's what I'm hearing. Um, I'm going to focus on what I want to do first because uh, you know I see on my last fight I may I may have overlooked the opponent and not looked as good as I can. So I don't want that to happen again. Um, but the plan would definitely be beat what I want to do and do it convincingly like I did last year. At, at, uh, if that would be the best case scenario and uh, fight Ricky later on in the year. Now you will have seen Ricky Hatton. You you came up just after him in into world championship status. Um, so, what were your thoughts about him as you were making your way up? Um, I believe Ricky comes and brings an exciting style to the to the ring. Listen, uh, you know he brings. Uh, he, uh, you I don't really have to be kind now, Paulie. I believe he does a lot of holding. I do. You know, I I, I I'm, not, I'm gonna be honest. I believe he gets away with a lot. But uh, like you said, it's not a tickling contest in there. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, uh, I believe he's tailor made for Paulie Malinaji, and uh, I'll be showing people that later on in the year. But for now, like I said, I'm not overlooking what I'm going to do. Now, Paulie, would you fight him here, or would you like him at Madison Square Garden, about eight minutes from where you live? What would you like? I, I think ideally it'd be Madison Square Garden. I mean, uh, the Brits have shown that they can come across the Atlantic no problem. They went all the way to Las Vegas, so a trip mm. to New York is a lot quicker. It's the first stop in a transatlantic flight for the Brits to come to New York. And uh, Madison Square Garden has a lot of history. I believe Ricky has said he's always wanted to fight there. Um, I saw Miguel Cotto there and an, an unbelievable atmosphere, so um, I know the Garden holds a lot of uh, history and uh, it'd be another great mega fight to put along the great ones that the Garden has already had. So for you, what's, what's the key to beating a Ricky Hatton? Do you think you saw it with a, a Floyd Mayweather, even if not many can do what Mayweather does? Um, yeah, Floyd Mayweather is a one-of-a-kind fighter. He's, I believe he's the best fighter ever, but uh, I, I got a few tricks on my sleeve and uh, you know, I'll be showing Ricky a few of them when the time comes. But um, for the time being, you know, uh, we'll see uh, what happens on May 24th. Uh, I, I plan on looking very impressive in front of the British crowd and uh, introducing myself to the, to the English fans. And uh, hopefully everybody will look forward to me and Ricky getting on later in the year. Well, listen, Paulie, we're looking forward to you arriving here in a few weeks' time at the early May. Now, do me a favour. Make sure you bring your bad guy image and your big mouth with you, OK? Keep us entertained. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I plan on bringing everything. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Paulie <laughs> Malinaji, thanks very much for joining us. No problem, thank you. Oh, Cheers, Paulie. What a nice, happy, oh, smiley he, boy. He was very, very chirpy. Big mouth, huh? Very chirpy. <laughs> Mike, give us a quick line on Junior Whit Witter's next opponent. Mm. Yeah, he's still the WBC champion, as we were saying, and plans, I'm told, are advanced for him to face the number one contender at light welterweight, an American, Tim Bradley, who's only 24, in Nottingham on May the 10th, and that will be a double main header with the uh, the world title eliminator featuring Carl Froch and Dennis Inkins. So two big fights, top of the bill, May the 10th, and live on ITV as well. Big night.